Hi, and welcome to Great Getaways. On today's show, we're going to take you to a quaint little town on Lake Huron called Port Sanilac. And whether you're up here for the day or the entire week, there's plenty of things to do. We're going to be taking in a local sailboat race, go to an antique boat show, enjoy some fine dining, and then it's down to the harbor for music in the harbor on Saturday night. Should be a good show, let's get started. Today we are taking you on a trip to one of the most beautiful port cities on the Great Lakes, Port Sanilac. Let's get started. With a population of less than 700, this village was originally a lumberjack settlement on the shores of Lake Huron named Bark Shanty. In the late 1840s and 1850s, the settlement gained its first sawmill, schoolhouse, and general store. In 1857, the village was renamed to Port Sanilac, as it is in Sanilac Township in Sanilac County. Local legend attributes the name to a Wyandotte Indian chief named Sanilac. The charming little village on the shores of Lake Huron seemed to offer something for everyone. From water sports to history, it was all on our itinerary today. We started with a stroll through town. Chester Kolox, owner of the Port Sanilac Marina and a member of the Downtown Development Association, would be our tour guide. See, Bill, give us a few words about Port Sanilac. Oh, yeah. Great place to live. And at the Methodist Church right up, uh, up the road, the Boy Scouts of America was started a long time ago. Really? Yes. I didn't know that. Ah, uh, it was interesting. The first minister came from England and they had a Boy Scout troop in England and see, so he came over here and started the Boy Scouts of America. Another interesting uh, bit of history here, right where you're standing today uh, used to be the foundation of the original Raymond Hardware. My wife's great, great, great grandfather, Uri Raymond, landed here in 1848, set up shop right where you're standing and there was water at the time. Before the harbor was built, much of the dredge material was taken and put right where we're standing and filled this in. So 150 years ago, this was all water and the hardware store was built on stilts. And just a few feet behind you, you'll see the old foundation from the original Raymond Hardware, which is the oldest hardware in Michigan. And just coincidentally, 150 years later, I happened to meet his great, great, great granddaughter in 1977. And we since have gotten married and we started a business on the same foundation that her father had the hardware store on, which is the current Port Sanilac Marina. In 1868, Yuri Raymond bought the sales shop at 29 South Rig Street and relocated the store to where it sits today. Today, Port Sandlack Harbor of Refuge is run by the Michigan DNR and along with two marinas, it is a full service public dockage facility. Offering many amenities, the Port Sandlack public docks are a premier destination for boaters on Lake Huron. Since its completion in 1949, many things have changed. Here is Harbor Master David Marshall to bring us up to date. This is a municipal harbor, so we do transient dockage as well as seasonal dockage. We have 68 slips. Half can be seasonal, half can be open transient. Our amenities here at the harbor, we have, of course, the fuel dock. We have diesel and gasoline. We have pump outs. We have water and electricity, 30 amp and 50 amp for all the boaters. Once we get up on shore here, we have the restroom facilities and showers. We have a club room, which offers Wi-Fi and internet TV. We have barbecues with the gazebo. Everything you need is within walking distance of the harbor, whether it's food, lodging, or a walk in the park with your dog. To help attract more boaters to this hidden gym, they have special offers for weekend boaters. The harbor has set aside 50% of its dockage for the transient boater to make sure that when other ports are full, there's still room at Port Sanilac. Yeah, of course, right next door we have the uh, Port Sanilac Marina, which offers a lot more amenity services, repairs and service station and hoist area. The Port Sanilac Marina is a full service marina offering everything from boat sales and storage to full service and maintenance facilities. Port Sandlack Marina offers long-term dockage services too. Kayak and paddle boat rentals are also available for day trippers who stop here. A lot of people uh, that aren't boaters uh, think, well, they cannot come down and enjoy the waterfront. Well, we try and make ourselves available to anybody and everybody, especially the land lovers. You don't have to own a boat to enjoy the, the waterfront. Right behind the camera here, we have a really nice ice cream store. We have many locals that come down in from the uh, farmlands just for ice cream on a Saturday, Sunday afternoon, and they stroll the docks and watch the boats. Or if you happen to be a little more adventurous, you can actually get in a little kayak here for $15 and go out and actually experience the water. Or if you have your own inflatable 
or your own fishing rod, you can walk right out on the breakwater. You don't have to be a boater to enjoy the Port Sandalac Harbor or Port Sandalac Marina. There was so much more to do on the water and we'll come back for that later. But now it's time to treat our palate to a little wine tasting and enjoy an afternoon of entertainment and sensory delight with a stop at the Blue Water Winery, located just outside of town on M25. We have 20 acres planted here and we have a tasting room open from Thursday, Thursday to Sunday, June through October. Uh, our tasting room is a lot of fun. It's, it's partially outside. This is it, actually. Along with the vineyard tours, we have, um, we have some alpacas that you can feed and take a look at. They are, um, quite honestly, my husband's pets, and they're very fun and furry and very gentle and good for children. Rieslings are our specialty and our flagship product. We also have Chardonnays, Pinot Noir, Cabernets, Cabernet Francs, and various blends uh, such as uh, a Concord blend and some what we call our party wines as well. We have vineyard tours, uh, weather permitting, and this allows the, uh, our, uh, our customers and guests to take a beautiful walk through the vineyard, very romantic in the fall. Now it was time for lunch at one of the many fine eateries in Port Sanilac. Our stop would be at the Van Camp House where we would meet owner Andy Fabian. We're, we're kind of an eclectic American little bistro. Uh, it's, we, we really kind of pressure ourselves each week because we change our menu on a weekly basis. Uh, everything, the proteins stay the same, you know, of course, which would be the, your filet, our salmon, which is flown in from Seattle um, every week, our lamb, which is a beautiful uh, American-raised lamb. Uh, but the, the way we produce them is, is a different product every week. So The uh, uh, luxuries I have here at, at the Van Camp House is the fact that I'm also the village president, so I, I get a chance to meet uh, many, many people. And, and I, also, I also go uh, to great lengths to, uh, one, not only visit every, every one of my businesses in this little town, I go to every restaurant in this little neighborhood, and if you're up in the Port Sanilac Way, we would love to have you come visit. If you come to the Van Camp House, if you go to Yuri's, if you go to the Stone Lodge, if you go to the Blue Water Inn, or even Mary's Diner. We just want you to come to Port Sanilac and enjoy our, our, our great hospitality. As we headed back to the water, we stopped to enjoy the view of the Port Sanilac Lighthouse. The octagon hourglass-shaped tower near its top is made of tiered, reverse stair-stepped brick. It is 14 feet in diameter at its base and tapers vertically to 9 feet in diameter below the gallery. The placement and the unique shape were dedicated and created because of a budgetary constraint when Congress appropriated only half the money requested. Designed by 11th District Engineer Captain Charles E. L. B. Davis, the design has been called both unique and architecturally significant in its elegance. The tower is white with a red roof. The handsome lighthouse shares its design with only one other light located on Lake Michigan. The Port Sandlack Light Tower is capped with a cast iron lantern room which still houses the fourth order Fresnel lens. The lens and its brass reflector send the light out in a 300 degree arc across the lake. This is only one of 70 Fresnel lenses that are still operational in the United States, 16 of which are used on the Great Lakes, of which 8 are in Michigan. The lighthouse is still an active aid to navigation, but is now privately owned. There is a public access pier that stretches out into the lake right next to the tower, so viewing is not a problem. I originally belonged to the Thompson Steamship Lines, and there was a steamship dock off of this property until they started construction, uh, Thompson sold the property to the U.S. government and they construct, finished construction on the lighthouse in 1886. Um, the first keeper was a man named Richard Morris and the interesting story about the keepers is they were all from the same family. Uh, Morris and the next keeper, Holmes, were both married to sisters and their family name was Sinclair uh, they kept were like the head keeper down at the Fort Gratiot Light and also at Thunder Bay. Um, so quite a story about lighthouse families and the life saving service and that all that kind of information. Um, the original light uh, burned oil, of course, and was a constant white light. And they would shut it off come October because the shipping shut down for the winter. 
um, and then they started it back up again in the springtime. One of the biggest stories in this area was the storm of 1913. Um, it's pretty well known that the, the ships that sank off of here were actually blown south past town um, and there are stories of hearing whistles blowing but at that point you were talking about sustained 90 mile an hour winds. Um, one of the things that we like to talk to the, the kids about at the museum is the size of these ships that were actually turned over. They were almost brand new steel ships that were built you say 1908, 1913 were turned over, they were 750 feet long, and if you ever stood on a freighter on the deck, you feel like you're towering over the water. They're just huge. And to imagine that a storm would flip one of these over, and that, those were the big ones, um, and there were several of them that went down. There were ocean-going ships that were sunk during that storm, um, but we know two of them, the Price and the Regina, went right past here uh, during the storm, but of course there was nothing anybody could do about it. As you can imagine, there are people going by here all the time to take a look at the lighthouse, take pictures of it, whether they're in a tour group. Uh, we get people come in RV groups and there's 12, 20 of them at a time that come and they, they tour and look at all the lighthouses on the lakes. Or we just get people coming to take pictures and see the lighthouse there as an individual. Um, there's plenty of picture taking opportunities here, whether you're doing video or still photography. Um, and it really doesn't matter what season you're here. Uh, anything from spring to winter, Summer is always nice, but you're talking about a lighthouse on the lake. You can take a picture any day you want. It's a good picture. The area is full of history, and one of the best spots to learn about it is the Sandlack County Historic Village and Museum. The Sandlack County Historic Village and Museum is a collection of nine historic buildings located on 10 acres of the original Dr. Joseph Loop estate. The Sandlot County Historical Society invites you to step back in time as you wander through the beautiful gardens and the Victorian, Edwardian, and vintage buildings and exhibits that are featured on the property. A functioning Centennial Schoolhouse gives hundreds of local elementary children the experience of learning in a one-room 1800s environment every year. A turn-of-the-century general store and historic church still fulfill their original purpose. One of Michigan's most popular performance views, the Barn Theater, is housed in the Loop family's 1880s era barn on the museum property. And if you enjoy ghost stories, they have their share of those too. Back on land, there was still so much to discover with the Huron Shores Championship Golf Course being a stop that most would find impressive. Uh, the things that people enjoy most about Huron Shores Golf Course are the, the scenery, the individualness of the course, um, the fact that we are a little destination resort where you can go up to and, and travel to, um, yet close enough that we are you know, within reach. Um, here at Huron Shores we, we offer a lot of uh, different special events for our golfers. We have unlimited outings open to the public. Uh, we ourselves run two events a, mo a month for our members um, as well as our invitationals. We have a men's invitational, a ladies invitational, and a mixed invitational, um, each that run throughout the year and those are big cash money games open to anyone who would like to play. We have full range of carts, um, full operating restaurant, dining room, bar, beverage carts running daily, um, open sun up to sundown from April 1st through November 31st. I'd like to extend an invitation to everyone to open to the public uh, to come out and see us here in Port Sandlack. Again, three and a half miles north of downtown on M25. Come see our championship golf course, and while you're in the area, stay for the hiking, the camping, and the fishing on the lake. The scenic trip up the shore of Lake Huron offers golfers a great course with a northern attitude while limiting fuel costs. Huron Shores was originally started in 1925 as a nine-hole course. It remained a nine-hole course for 72 years until the addition of the newest nine holes in 1997. Best of all, it is enjoyable to play with a scenic environment and exposure to nature. The lodging was very homey and just what you would expect from a beautiful harbor town. Little cottages like this could be rented by the day or the week. There are motels and of course historic B&Bs. We're an hour and a half from Detroit on surrounding area, an hour and a half, an hour and 45 minutes. You're up here and you're up north. So it's a great getaway. Our tour of Port Sandlack takes us back on the water with a sailboat race. 
We would get right out in the middle of the race with Chester as he explained what to expect. Here is owner of Port Sandlight Marina to tell us more about the race that happens on Friday nights throughout the summer. In about less than 10 or 15 minutes, there'll be a number of boats leaving the dock, and then our race course is right behind us, right here on Lake Huron. And there's a series of five buoys, but we'll only be going around three. It's a triangular type course. Uh, the course tonight's about uh, 5.1 miles long. We'll head to the north, we'll round the buoy to the, uh, to the north, which is our B mark. Then we'll head due south another two miles to uh, what we call our D mark. And then we'll make it back to the A mark where we started, which gives us a complete triangle, which is about 5.1 miles long. The reason I say 5.1 exactly, because these races are based on a handicap, and a handicap is based on the performance of the boat and the distance of the race. Because if it's a longer race, boats have to have a bigger handicap. It's all computed on time, on distance. Okay, now you're, you're talking about a handicap, so we're going to see a variety of types of boats out here? Oh, absolutely. You'll have boats that you know could be 20 foot long to 49 foot long. They could be race boats, they could be uh, cruising boats, they could be family lover boats. Uh, there's a variety of boats out here. In fact, most of the boats in this harbor are not really race boats. They're more this type of boat where people use them more for their weekend cottage. Uh, a lot of our customers are from the Flint, Lansing, Detroit, Ann Arbor, uh, and they decided that they want to actually live on their boat on Lake Huron rather than have a cottage and pay their taxes and mow them on and that kind of thing. This way they got literally a cottage that they can sail. Okay. Now, how long does the race normally take? Well, tonight it won't be any longer than an hour and a half. Uh, this is a little bit of what I would call unorthodox racing. Uh, most sailboat racing is sanctioned by the U.S. Sail, which is a, a racing organization that uh, sanctions races in the United States, but this isn't really that type of race. This is more of a fun thing. We call it a beer can series, and the reason we, use, we say beer can is it's a typical term in the sailboat world for we're just going out there to have some fun. We're not out there to go great guns and beat the next guy. We just want to get our boat out of the slip, go around the race course and have some fun and go back to the bar. It's a beautiful night. I mean, this is what it's about, getting out on the water, enjoying the beautiful Lake Huron breeze, the clean water, the fresh air. I, it couldn't be better. It really could. Now, I'll tell you what, too, being out here and watching these things go flying by is really exciting. It's really something to see. Chester, for people coming up here and wanting to watch this race, what's the best way for them to do it? Well, just come up on any Friday night from Memorial Day through Labor Day, and a lot of people think they have to have a boat to get involved. Uh, once you find that most of these people are looking for crew that own the boat, you know, I can't guarantee it, but most times if you show up on the waterfront and you're willing and able and capable, uh, somebody will take you on board and you can just start uh, handling the lines and go for a boat ride, and the next thing you know, you got a new friendship and you get a chance to get on board. Okay, for those of those who don't want to get on the boat, can they well, still see it? Oh, yeah, there's a, there's a nice restaurant overlooking the harbor, beautiful balcony view. You can just sit out there and have a cocktail and watch the race. If you are interested in participating or just sitting on the shore and watching, this race happens every Friday throughout the summer. You can find out more at our website at greatgetaways.tv. Port Sandlack draws antique boat buffs from near and far as they have their annual antique boat show. Remember the days of mahogany decks and rumbling tailpipes cruising the rivers and the lakes? Well, they return to Port Sandlack every year in all their splendor and glory. Port Sandlack Antique Boat Show features over 34 antique and classic boats on display in Port Sandlack Harbor. Boaters and spectators alike are amazed at the variety and quality of the various crafts. Boats ranging from a lovely little dinghy to a 57-foot yacht invite people on board for tours, races across the lake, and to show off their craftsmanship. Beginning Friday afternoon, there is an open water poker run for the boaters. Boaters will take a run to three different points to receive a playing card that will fill out a hand of five cards. The boater with the best hand will win the prize. Following the poker run, there is a reception at Harbor Park. Sir, this is Bill uh, from Archie Thomas Real Estate, and Bill's also involved with the Harbor Commission and a community leader here. In fact, he's very involved with the uh, Port Sandlack Antique Boat Show, which is coming up just in a couple days. Uh, anything you'd like to tell us about Port Sandlack, Bill? Yeah, it's, a, it's just a great, relaxing place to live. There's nice people here. That's a golf course here, a magnificent harbor. That This harbor is just 
probably one of the nicest in Michigan, but it's kind of undiscovered, and that's why we're pushing this boat show so strong. Bill's dad started a real estate firm here many years ago. When was that, Bill? 47 years. 47 years, and Bill's taken over the family business. We come across a lot of people that have retired from the metro Detroit area, correct me if I'm wrong, but we're starting to see more and more people from all parts of the state, and if not the country. Uh, especially with the aging boomer population, you're just getting variety of people coming in. Stop at the Farmer's Market each Friday to experience a feeling of community like no other. At the Port Sandlack Farmer's Market, you'll be able to meet the men and women who grow and make the foods and crafts you buy. Hi, welcome to the Port Sandlack Farmer's Market. I'm Carolyn Getze, I'm the market manager. This is a producer's market. Everybody that brings uh, goods here makes them or grows them. We have everything from organic beef to organic vegetables to uh, wonderful baked goods. We even have a lady who uh, dyes and spins her own wool. We uh, run from May to the end of October and it's every Friday from 3 to 7 p.m. We hope you can come and see us. The Port Sandlack Farmer's Market is a strict producer's market. This means that all the goods must be made and grown within Sandlack, Huron, or Tuscola County. There are two public beaches in Port Sandlack. The Village Beach can be found north of the downtown area, tucked behind the Lutheran Church. The beach features a small public park with picnic facilities. The second beach is adjacent to the DNR boat launch. Located on the north side of the Northern Harbor break wall, this park offers a spacious beach and plenty of parking. Both beaches offer a wonderful place for families to spend the afternoon in the sun and water. Port Sand Lake is a popular fishing destination. Perch are widely available, as well as salmon and walleye. The DNR Boat Launch offers a convenient place to leave from. It also features public fish cleaning stations, parking with room for 129 vehicles and restrooms. Fishing charters are available out of the Port Sandlight Marina. For the little kids in the boat list, there's always fishing off the break wall. You can catch perch, catfish, and there's always a million gobies. Our trip through Sandlack County has taken us full circle as we end our day in Port Sandlack for their weekly music in the harbor. Every Saturday night from June 26th through September 4th from 7 to 9 p.m., you can enjoy music of all kinds from jazz to folk. We thought it was only fitting to end our day with some of that great music as we stroll through the town to say goodnight. Well, unfortunately, all good things must come to an end as it is with this trip and today's show. If you enjoyed today's show and would like more information for your own great getaway, you can get a free guide. It's available from the number on your screen. We have added a new feature on our site for your enjoyment and to give you more information about our trip to help you plan your own. We have added extra video content that we did not have time for on today's show, including extended clips on features from this episode and completely new adventures and stops. I think that's going to about do it for the day. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.